Hi everybody, it's Julie, and today I'm going to be sharing about monoprinting. This is from a beginner's perspective because I've never done it before. This is my maiden voyage, and it's really kind of a unique way to make art prints, and they're one of a kind, very unique, one of a kind pieces. And in the past, you had to actually make your gelatin plate from scratch, and it would only last for one printing session. Well, the folks at Jelly Arts have developed a printing plate that can be used over and over and over again, and you can skip the part of making the plate and just get right on with your printing. And I'm working with a six by six plate, and it comes with this really great packaging that's perfect for storage, so don't throw any of the packaging away. Save it. They've got a brochure in there, and the clamshell is perfect for storing your jelly plate. And it also comes with two sheets of acetate. You always want to keep it on a non-porous surface, like these acetate pieces. I'm going to peel off the top layer and set it aside and save it for later when I'm ready to put my plate away. But I need to remove that in order to start applying mediums to the surface of the plate. And this plate is a lot like a finger jello. If you've ever had finger jello, my mom used to make it all the time as a kid. So it's very thick and it's soft and it's got this great surface and it's very flexible. You don't want to use anything sharp on this tool and you also, like I said, you want to keep it on a non-porous surface. So I kept that acetate sheet on the back. Now to add texture and pattern, we can use stencils and I've got quite a variety of stencils here that I, I thought would be fun to play with. You can use stamps. You can actually stamp into the paint and remove the paint. So I found that bold images worked really well. And you can also actually draw patterns and designs using a Q-tip or a soft brush, but you don't want to use anything sharp, hard or sharp. Um, because it'll ruin the surface. And to apply the paint, we're going to need some rubber brayers. Now, I have two different size brayers here. Um, I'm going to talk about different mediums. Now, I started out with pigment inks because I had heard that you could use pigment inks. And since I had a lot of pigment reinkers, I thought, what the heck, let's try it and see what we get. So I'm starting with the Adirondack pigment reinker. Now, this is more fluid than acrylic paint, so it's more wet. And I noticed that as I started to brayer it out, that it started to bead up on the surface of the plate and no amount of brayering seemed to alleviate this issue and I didn't like it. Now that doesn't mean it wouldn't be a cool effect on your paper but I personally wasn't going for this look and didn't like it so I decided to just wipe it clean and I took a baby wipe but you can clean off your jelly plate completely by using some hand sanitizer or water and a paper towel um, in the end ultimately I started using hand sanitizer and a paper towel and found that worked really well now here I am trying Memento Lux pigment ink and this was more the consistency of acrylic paint but again, if you're looking there carefully at the plate, you'll see that I did have some beading issues and I had to work a little harder to get it to smooth out and quit beading up. And I had to work faster. And so I put on a template or a mask and put down some paper. I'm working with photocopy paper because this is of the very first time I've ever done this and I wanted to just see what it was like and get an idea of the step the steps involved and the process. So I had a stack of really inexpensive photocopy paper there. And the first print I pulled obviously didn't get much there because that stencil was pretty thick. But now I've removed the stencil and I'm putting down a clean sheet of photocopy paper and I'm gonna smooth it out and press it, burnish it all across the surface of my jelly plate with the flat of my hands. And then I guess this is where the magic happens. You're gonna peel that up and there you've got a print. I wasn't quite satisfied with that, so I decided to try some Studio Acrylic Paint by Claudine Helmuth. And I really love her palette of paints. Um, I didn't have a lot on hand. This is what I had left over from some projects I'd done last year. But I really loved the way this paint brayered. And I got a really nice, smooth finish. I didn't have any beading issues. And I really liked how quickly I was able to roll that out. And I noticed that to avoid any straight lines from the brayer, the best thing to do was to just allow the weight of the brayer to roll across and not press into the gelatin plate with that brayer. Just let the weight of the brayer spread that paint out and roll it. So then I took my... Um, paper and put that over the top. I didn't get much of an impression on there. So I said, okay, well, let's lift up the stencil and see what we get. And there you can see a pattern. 
and we'll go ahead and take another clean sheet of paper and then I just went ahead and brayered right over the top of that. So this is one other method that you can use to um, press the paper, burnish the paper to the surface. And then when I pulled up on it, I got a partial pattern and I was like, oh, that paint dried really fast. So I added more paint. Now, one thing I would do with the Claudine uh, Studio paints is I would add some extender or what they call open time. And I think this will help um, increase the wetness and moisture so that I could get more of a print. So I added more paint because that's what I had and I didn't have any more open time to add, but I would have put that down first and then brayered the paint over the top of that to mix it. And so here I'm trying again to see what I'm going to get using just the paint itself, the studio paint. So I applied another layer of paint and brayered it out, added the stencil, peeled the stencil up, and now I'm applying my paper to see what I'm going to get. Now I noticed that as I started to pull this print, some of the paint in different areas had dried faster than I wanted to, and so I got kind of a splotchy effect, which really wasn't something I was after, but that's still probably usable. I threw it away just so I could try again. But um, I think because this particular paint dries faster, and some acrylic paints will dry faster than others, I think what I would do is I would take some extra time and I would put a dollop of that onto the plate and brayer it across the whole surface and then add my paint and brayer the two right on the plate. Too little paint can make your paper stick, or if the paint dries too fast, it'll make your paper stick to the plate. And too much paint will end up in a super slick surface where everything kind of slides around. So you kind of have to find that happy medium. Now I've moved on here to some distress paints and it did bead up on the surface. I tried washing the plate with soapy water and drying it and then um, applying the distress paint again and it just still beaded up on me. But I noticed that as I let it sit there on the plate a little bit as I was brayering and the air kind of started drying that paint, it started to get tacky and more creamy and smooth um, smoothly finished on the plate like we would expect a regular acrylic paint to do. But you have to remember this is distressed paint, so it's a slightly different beast. So I added some extra color and I kept going, but I noticed it was starting to dry on me and I needed to stop. I was going to try to blend it all out and I, I noticed it was lifting off the plate there. So I decided, you know what, I need to stop and I just need to go ahead and make a print and see what I can get. So I lifted my stencils off and applied a clean sheet of paper and smooth that out, burnished it out with my hands. And that's one thing you do kind of have to watch out for. You know, if if your paint's drying too fast, like the distressed paint was, it started out too wet and beading, and then it started to get too dry. And so I had to kind of make a, a, a call there and decide that it was time. And now the second poll, we'll see what we get. I'm curious. So this second print is called a ghost print and it's taking the residue or the leftover paint and seeing what you can get. Sometimes it's wet enough you can get a second print, a ghost print, and there you go. I thought that was really interesting and neat too. So it's gonna give you two different effects. The one on the left is more intense, of course, and the one on the right I thought would be fun to add more things to and keep layering. And watch that in the second video.